Hey everybody, it's uh, Chris over Dixieland Farm, and I'm making a video today sort of in response to something that Randy, Deadwax66, said in his Vinyl Tag 2019 video. And it was advice to new people who maybe want to start making VC videos. And the advice was good intentioned, and he's not wrong, but I'll get to that in a second. So he said, you know, just get on the camera. First videos everyone makes, you know, are stiff compared to the second, third, fourth, and fifth until you kind of get used to talking to yourself to a, an imaginary audience. Totally true. He said, you know, and, uh, show something that you want to turn people on to. Don't show something that's, you know, fairly common, like the Beatles, because everyone kind of knows about those albums. This is where I have my issue. And this is a critique of the VC. I've been here for, I don't remember, seven, eight, nine years, a while. I'm watching videos uh, even a year before that. So I've been here not since the beginning, but, uh, you know, pretty close to the uh, earlier part of the VC when we all knew each other. It was only like 100 uh, at most of us. Actually, there were really only about 50 of us at the time. And the problem that's always been is kind of a one-upmanship of always trying to show something better and more obscure and more out there than somebody else to turn them on. Neglecting albums that sold millions of records and not discussing them. And these are albums that people uh, love. And there's a reason why they sold millions. They're not uh, bad just because they sold millions. And to talk about them because, well, everyone has them and knows about them, that may not be true. There are also other people watching who are not music nerds, who do want to learn about uh, music that maybe they've seen but never have actually listened to. So I uh, started a series a while ago called Commonplace Collection. I had never seen anyone talk about Billy Joel kind of in depth. I did a Billy Joel video. I mean, I could say it's in depth is... Uh, yeah, nonsense, but still, you know what I'm saying, and Elton John, and I did one on ELO, and uh, so, you know, I've been doing videos like that, and I encourage other people to show stuff that you think, well, everyone knows about this, because maybe they don't. So I've picked an album that is extremely common, that everyone does know about, uh, and I think a few people have shown it in their video. I think Mark Glass Orchid Aftermath has shown it. I'm pretty sure that Value Vinyl Steve has shown it, and that is going to be today's Video album is Herb Alpert, the Tijuana Brass, Whipped Cream, and Other Delights. So, an iconic album, 6 million copies sold in 1965, 66, something like that. And let me go into a little bit about it. Maybe you learn something that one, she is three months pregnant when this uh, picture was taken. She's wearing a blanket, and that's whipped cream. Uh, it's not whipped cream, it's actually shaving cream. Whipped cream would melt in the light. Uh, the only thing that's whipped cream is uh, the one on the finger. And the uh, album has been parodied lots of times, including by comedian Pat Cooper, who you may know from his disputes with his family on the Howard Stern Show in the 90s. Uh, and he was a uh, Catskill comedian, uh, a lot of Italian, New York-based humor that does not translate now, but... Uh, uh, he did it with spaghetti sauce and other delights, and then there was, a uh, was it Soul Asylum or Collective Soul? I think it's Soul Asylum did, uh, Clam Dip and other delights, and, uh, or, or no, it was something else. Oh, I don't know. And then there was, like, a, a tribute band of old people, and maybe, they were Sour Cream and other delights. That's right, so, uh, the Soul Asylum was Clam Dip, and they were Sour Cream and other delights. Anyway, um, to describe this music, uh, you, you know a lot of it already, because it played for a long time on the, uh, the dating game. Uh, the, the bumpers of, you know, different people coming out would play stuff from this album and the album after this. If you watch Austin Powers, that music is heavily inspired and uses music that is similar to this. And Herb Alpert, from what I can figure out, is the father of this genre, which uh, he went to Mexico and he heard mariachi bands and he kind of blended that with... Uh, Bachelor Pad music, which I love, and uh, together it comes up with this uh, Mexican-esque inspired jazz. And people who play on this album, uh, you may have heard, uh, for record nerds, uh, Hal Blaine, the drummer, Carol uh, Kay, famous bassist from the Wrecking Crew, Leon Russell, maybe you know of, play the piano on this. So it kind of uh, fuses together Bachelor Pad pop jazz with mariachi and that's how the Herb Alpert and the Tijuana Brass kind of got life. And the one thing about this kind of music is that it's always 
happy sounding. It is, you know, very upbeat. And it is hard to listen to this and one, not think of Austin Powers in the swinging 60s, but uh, how just bubbly it is. And you really can't stay in a bad mood when you're listening to uh, Love Potion Number 9, but done in a you know, <laughs> Mexican, you know, swinging style. And uh, uh, Spanish Flea is on a different album, but uh, that's another good one. Uh, just a fun album. So uh, A&M, uh, Herb Alpert is the A in A&M. Uh, I, I, Moss is the M, and together they, they made their record label. So he owned all the records, uh, the, the, all the music, the, the, the record label. Uh, his first album, Lonely Bull, was recorded in his garage. So owned everything and then started putting on different acts. Hugely successful music mogul, uh, donated a lot to charity, still alive, um, hit in the 70s or early 80s with Rise, which if you if I played it for you, you would know. It's got kind of that moonlighting, uh, the moonlighting, kind of that sound to it, and I can't uh, do it, but that's not from Moonlighting, by the way, but it's got that, you know, if you know the theme song of that, that kind of smooth jazz from the 80s, but uh, trumpet, hell of a trumpet player. Just an, an amazing musicianship. They, they really do play well. So, Herb Alpert, Whipped Cream and Other Delights. You want to make this a thread? You want to make this a, a challenge to yourself to show a common record and talk about it? I am uh, more than happy. You don't have to. I'm just saying that's what I'm doing. Uh, and my advice is always, talk about stuff you are passionate about. Talk about stuff you like. I like this. I mean, I like stuff that nobody else likes. But uh, I do like that. What else do I... I can talk about this. This is talked about more in the VC, Blowing Pig, than this. That's a fact. Genesis has talked more about <laughs> than, than this. Six million copies. So, there you go. From Dixieland Farm, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.